Hello everyone, good morning. So in last video, uh, we covered the section 5.2 from NEC license exam preparation. So we are covering the topic computer network. And in last video, I covered 5.2 services and error detection and correction. So in this video, I'll be covering flow control and data link protocol. Okay, so without any further delay, let's go to the whiteboard portion. So the next section is flow control. Okay, so flow control, basically what it means is, like if we have a sender and if we have a receiver, so sender should send only that much data that a re receiver can receive. Okay, so there should not be concept of overflow. Fine. So for this, we have got three protocols, stop and wait, go back and, and selective repeat. Selective repeat. Okay. So in stop and wait, what happens is a sender sends a data and stop till the receiver will send the acknowledgement for the received data. Okay, so that is why it is called stop and wait protocol. For go back and protocol, suppose a sender is sending data or frame 1, 2, 3, 4. So the receiver has to send the acknowledgement for each frame. So imagine if while sending the acknowledgement for frame number 2, if the acknowledgement got lost or the sender doesn't receive this acknowledgement, so it is going to send all the frame again from 2, that is 2, 3, 4. Okay, so the point where the error occurs, it, it is going to send all the frame once again. What happens in selective repeat for the same diagram, if there is error in 2, so the sender is only going to send this frame number 2, not 3 and 4. Okay, so this is the concept of flow control. So <coughs> let's go to the MCQ portion. So what is the purpose of flow control in data communication? To prevent unauthorized access, to manage the flow of data between sender and receiver. Yes, to encrypt the data, no. To detect and correct error in data, no. So B is the correct answer. Let's go to next question. Which flow control method involves the receiver sending messages to sender to control the rate of data transmission receiver sending messages to sender it means sender is this receiver is this so receiver will send back a message which is nothing but called acknowledgement okay so as i told you stop and wait is the correct answer for this <coughs> so in flow control what is the purpose of window concept okay window means what like suppose if you are going to send the number of frames so how many frames should you send for example if i am going to send five frame one two three four five so we can put this in a window so it is basically it is going to manage the rate of transmission like how much frame can we send at one time okay so to provide encryption no to manage the rate of data transmission yes to detect error to control access to network no b is the correct answer <coughs> okay let's go to next sorry let's go to next slide okay so b is the correct answer let's go to next question that is question number four what is the primary disadvantage of a stop and wait flow pro to, uh, met control method so inefficient use of network bandwidth, difficulty in error detection, no, complex implementation, no, high overhead in acknowledgement each frame, no. So the correct answer is inefficient use of network bandwidth because in stop and wait, we will not, we are not going to send the uh, frame until and unless we are going to get the acknowledgement and for each frame we send, we need to get the acknowledgement. Hence there is inefficient use of network bandwidth. Next question is, which of the flow control technique allows multiple frame to be transmitted between sender and receiver simultaneously? Okay, so multiple frames simultaneously means at one time. So as I told you, in sliding window, what we can do is we can um, we can fix the number of frame that we want to send at once. Okay, so sliding window is the correct answer. Let's go to next question. <coughs> in go back and uh, flow protocol what happens when an error is detected in one, one frame so as i explained you in the beginning the sender retransmit only the frame with error no the sender retransmit all the frame from the one with the error onward yes the sender skips a frame the receiver discard no b is the correct and it means that from where the error occur 
it is going to send all the frame after that <coughs> let's go to next question mm, i think that was slide number 11 fine so the correct answer is the sender transmit all the frame with one the error occur which flow control method provide the highest efficiency in term of network bandwidth utilization so the correct an answer is selective repeat because in selective repeat only the frame where the error occur it is going to be retransmitted next question is what is the purpose of acknowledgement and negative acknowledgement okay so to verify the identity of sender to request additional data to confirm the successful recipient of frame or indicate the error yes so if if uh, the receiver has received the frame successfully it is going to send acknowledgement and if there is any type of error it is going to send the negative acknowledgement in which flow control in sorry in flow control what does the term congestion control refers to okay so congestion control means managing the flow of data no it is called flow control detecting and correcting the error no preventing unauthorized access to network no managing the network traffic to avoid the congestion and delay okay so this method is nothing but congestion control let's go to next slide so i think it is slide number 12 okay yeah managing the network traffic to avoid the congestion control which flow control method allow the receiver to selectively request selectively request the transmission of a specific frame okay so in selective repeat we can only select we can allow the receiver to selectively request the transmission of a specific frame that one frame so selective repeat is the correct answer <coughs> okay so next uh, uh, topic or the portion is data link control okay so the first question is which sub layer of data link layer is responsible for media access control so if you go to data link layer there are two sub layers that is logical link control and media access control okay so in order to um, in order to uh, which layer is responsible for media access control addressing so for this function media access control the mac layer is the correct answer let's go to question number two i think it's 13 somewhere Question number two is, in Ethernet, what is the purpose of MAC address? In Ethernet, what is the purpose of MAC address? To identify the physical location of a device on network, to uniquely identify a device on the network segment, yes. So, in order to identify a device uniquely, we need this MAC address. This is also known as hardware address. So, B is the correct answer. Let's go to next question which is what is the primary function of logical link control sublayer in data link layer okay so error detection and correction no flow control no logical addressing so logical link control the primary function is logical addressing so c is the correct answer let's go to next question this will be slide number 14 Okay, so let's go to ne next question. It's con in context of data link protocol, what is the purpose of frame check sequence? Okay, frame check sequence. So, <coughs> to mark the beginning and end of a frame, to provide logical addressing for the frame, to detect the error in the frame. Okay, so FCS, that is frame check sequence, it is, the, it is uh, generally used to detect the error in the frame. Next question is five number. Which data link protocol is commonly used in wireless LAN? Okay, so you can see Wi-Fi. That is eight zero two point eleven is the correct answer. Let's go to question number six. What is the primary difference between SDLC and PPP? Okay, so I think uh, one is bit oriented, other is byte oriented. Okay, so let me see the options. <coughs> okay, so the options are. HDLC is a synchronous while PPP is asynchronous. No. HDLC is used in wired, PPC is in wireless. No. HD is connection oriented, connectionless. No. HDLC is bit oriented. Okay. And while PP is a PPP is a byte oriented. Okay. What is the purpose of service access point in data link layer? 
ओके सो मैन इज द नेटवर्क एड्रेस नो सो सर्विस एक्सेस पॉइंट इट इज यूज टू स्पेसिफाई अ पर्टिकुलर टाइप ऑफ सर्विस ओके टू मार्क द बिगनिंग एंड इंड नो टू स्पेसिफाई द टाइप ऑफ सर्विस प्रोवाइड बाई एल एस यस दिस इज द करेक्ट आंसर नेक्स्ट इज वॉट इज द डाटा लिंक प्रोटोकॉल यूज इज अ टोकन पासिंग एक्सेस ओके टोकन पैक्स पासिंग एक्सेस सो इट इज डन बाई टोकन रिंग सो दिस इज द करेक्ट आंसर नेक्स्ट इज इन इथरनेट वॉट इज द डिफॉल्ट फ्रेम टाइप यूज बाई आई ट्रिपल ई एट जीरो टू पॉइंट टू एल एल सी सब लेयर ओके सो हियर द ऑप्शन आर इथरनेट टू फ्रेम आई ट्रिपल ई एट जीरो टू पॉइंट थ्री स्नैप दैट इज सब नेटवर्क एक्सेस प्रोटोकॉल फ्रेम या सो वॉट इज द डिफॉल्ट फ्रेम टाइप यूज इन आई ट्रिपल ई एट जीरो टू पॉइंट एल एल सी सो डिफॉल्ट फ्रेम यूज दिस स्नैप दैट इज सब नेटवर्क एक्सेस प्रोटोकॉल फ्रेम नेक्स्ट इज What is the primary function of media access control sublayer in data link layer? Okay, so options are logical addressing and routing. No, this is not provided. This is provided by LLC. Error detection and correction. No, frame sequencing. No, controlling access to the network media. Means this is done by the media access control in data link layer. Okay, so that's all for this section. In next section, uh, next video I'll be covering other two topic. Till then, stay safe and thank you.